والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم وقال الله تعالى في مقام آخر من خشي الرحمن بالغيب وجاء بقلب منيب ادخلوها بسلام سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وبارك وسلم to the next <coughs> maqam the next station in this journey towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called inaba al inaba so ahmad ajib rahimahullah ta'ala he describes al inaba he says al inaba tu wa hiya akhassu min at tawbati that it is more specific than tawbah لِأَنَّهَا رُجُوعٌ يَسْحَبُهُ إِنْكِسَارٌ Because that is repentance, that is returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is accompanied by the breaking of our ego. وَنَهُودٌ إِلَى السَّيْرِ And it is like a renewed aspiration on this journey towards Allah. يعني I'll explain that, inshallah. وَهِيَ ثَلَاثُ مَرَاتِبَ And he says that he, it is, it is three ranks. Or it has three steps. Number one, رُجُوعٌ مِنَ الذَّنْبِ إِلَى التَّوْبَةِ Returning from the sins to, towards tawbah. وَمِنَ الْغَفْلَةِ إِلَى الْيَقْضَةِ And from heedlessness to consciousness. وَمِنَ الْفَرْقِ إِلَى الْجَمْعِ إِلَى اللَّهِ And then, Farq and Jam'ah. Farq is that people, their minds are wandering around all the time. And Jam'ah is that their thoughts are combined, their thoughts are focused. Rather than thinking randomly all the time, thinking about something and thinking about something. So all of these stray thoughts, they come together on the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's saying, inaba is this. Number one, you do, you, you come out of sins and go towards the tawbah, repentance, and then people are sleeping, ghaflat, and then they come into the state of consciousness. And then all of these thoughts that are wandering around, they come back to, to one focus, one thought, which is the thought of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is inaba. Inaba, step number two. Basically, it is a sign that the heart has started loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is, when, what happens in love? In love, a person is always thinking about that being that he is loved, that he, he loves. This, uh, this is an attribute of loving somebody. That when you love somebody, then you're always thinking about that person. Majority of the times you are thinking about that person. For example, that a person, he, his, his nikah is done. His nikah is done. Now, this boy and a girl, they are technically married. But they're not living together yet. It's very normal that because you know, this love has de- has been developed in the hearts of this newly wed couple, and they're not yet living together. You know, we've seen that they're always talking to each other. I know somebody from uh, from the Jamaat that this boy he got married to a girl. Nikah was done, and Hazrat 
We told this guy specifically that, you know, you, you should not be talking to your wife until, you know, she comes to you. So, ji ji ji, Hazrat. And then, subhanAllah, after the nikah, you know, he gave her a call and she picked up the phone and now, subhanAllah, it was like good few months before the, uh, before she had to come to his house. And both of them were connected to Hazrat. And, he said to his wife that I'm going to talk to Hazrat, possibly give him, give him a call tomorrow. And she said, all right, you know, give him my salam as well, and you talk to him. And he called him and said, Hazrat, I know she is giving salam to you. He said, what? She's giving salam? Are you talking to him? <laughs> Are you talking to her? And he said, Ji, Hazrat. And Hazrat started laughing. So it's very difficult, you know, because you're just thinking about your spouse all the time. I know another person that similar thing happened that he got his nikah was done and that uh, they did not come together till uh, they did not start living together and the husband and the wife newly wed were always talking so while he had his exams to give and and did not do good in his exams because that's what he's doing rather than studying so the father said to the younger son that, you know, I'm not going to get you married until you finish your degree. <laughs> and this poor guy is thinking, you know, my what, my what did my brother do? It's very natural that when there is love, then you're always thinking. And when this love is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same thing happens if it's true love, sincere love, that you're always thinking. And when people do tawbah, step number one, they reach the station number one, then they develop that love of Allah Ta'ala in their heart. Why? Because they were running away from Allah. Now they are turned their direction, they turned, changed their lifestyle, and they started walking towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's promise is that you take a step towards me, my mercy will come to you ten steps. You come to me walking, I come to you running. You come to me a hand span, I come to you ten hand span. You come to me ten hand span, I'll come to you an arm's length, right? No. So, it's very natural. When people do tawbah, sincere tawbah, tawbah to nasu. When people do tawbah to nasu, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love comes in the heart. And when the love comes in the heart and it starts becoming more and more and more and more and more, and people are always thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is an abad. This is an abad. Ruju' wa hiya akhassu min at-tawbati li annahu ruju'un yashabuhu inkisarun wa nahudun ila sayri. So people get, have this renewed aspiration on this journey. You know, one is that somebody forces you to go to a certain place. And one is that you want to go. For example, you don't want to go to, say for example, pick a name, Australia. And it's like a 13 hour journey, you don't want to go there. 13 hours will be like a huge burden. But if you really want to go, you know, 13 hours will not be that much. Same 13 hours, but different feelings. Right? 13 hours with different feelings. First the 13 hour will be a, was, was a burden, now these 13 hours is, 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 is joy. You enjoy that. Why? Because there might be something waiting for you in Australia. So you are wait, you, you, you are enjoying that journey. This is what it is. Journey started by doing tawbah, but initially it may was a burden, but now with this renewed aspiration on this journey, is you start enjoying that. This is inabit. This is inabit. That you're always thinking about Allah Ta'ala because of that love that has been developed in your heart for Allah Ta'ala. And subhanAllah, you know, there are people who are always thinking of about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're, they're always thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know that there are people who started doing mamulat and you know, some people come to me initially when you ask them to do mamulat and ask them to you know, have by the way, this is called Bukuf Qalbi. In Abad, it's called Bukuf Qalbi. Bukuf Qalbi is that, when you, we say that your heart is stationed 
on the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's an abad. This is step number two. This is station number two. After doing tawbah, when you start walking towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts getting into your heart. Then you are thinking about Allah. This is all, this is exactly what waqoof qalbi is as well. So initially when you tell people that you should always have this feeling that Allah ta'ala is looking at you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you do. So you force yourself initially. You know, you forget and you remember, and you forget and you remember, you forget and you remember. Many people come and they say, oh, it's very difficult to have this state. That how should I get into that state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking into, at me all the time? How should I be thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time? There are people like that. Oh, I work, when I go to the meetings, you know, I totally forget I'm very engrossed in the meetings. When I am at, I'm, I'm at home, you know, I'm with my wife, with my children, it's very difficult to uh, to remember that. So how do I do do that? But subhanAllah, there are also people that I know that who have very different feeling. They come to me and they say, you know, I'm in the meeting and I'm not not able to concentrate on the meeting. That I don't know what are they talking about. So how, what should I do? And then they have to, we have to pull them back from the other side. We have to tell them, all right, you know what? <laughs> have balance. That's good state to be in. That you are thinking about Allah Ta'ala, but you also have to focus on your work. Because that's also an amanat. That's a trust that they're paying us. So we need to make sure that we are doing work with honesty. So we have to pull them back. So we have to be in the, be the people of the middle way. But that's what happens. Sometimes people are sitting in, in company, like amongst hundred people, but their hearts, hearts, their heart is attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who cares that people are sitting? Who cares that, you know, you are in front of me? The heart is hooked up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're talking to people, you're talking to people, but your heart is not heedless. It's thinking about Allah ta'ala. And there's another terminology that our mashayikh have written, which is in Persian. And Abdullah will tell me he's learning Persian. It's called khalwat dar anjuman. What does it mean? Abdullah? Did not read that place yet. Dar. What is dar? Khalwat dar anjuman. That you're, you, Despite of the fact that you are in Anjuman, it's not the name of a woman. <laughs> Anjuman means gathering. And despite of the fact that you are in a gathering, you have Khalwat. And in Jalwat you have Khalwat. You are sitting with people, but you, as if you are isolated, as you are, you are cut off, as if nobody is around. This People reach that state. Khalwat dar anjuman. Hearts are attacked because of that love that comes in the heart of Allah Ta'ala. And initially it can become very difficult. Why? Because, as I said, you're going on the other extreme. Now you are, you don't want to be with people. People invite you to work with on, on gatherings and you don't want, even though everything is perfectly fine, it's according to shariat, no mixed gatherings, nothing, but still, you know, you don't want to go. You don't want to sit with people. You want, don't want to eat with people. Don't want, don't want to talk with people. Right? Initially, it's very difficult. Very, very difficult. I and mean, people can get, get very, very easily upset, especially your wives. They can get easily upset with you because you're sitting with them and you're not talking and you're quiet and she wants to share all of what she has and, you know, she wants that response back and you are, hmm, all right, you know. Or it can be the other way around as well. The husbands, they want their wives to talk and now she's quiet and they can get, get upset. So it's difficult. It is not the best state to be in because you have to be with people, but at the very, so you, you're in the people, cut off from them, but at the very same time you want to be with them. Right? But this is a state that does come and whoever is serious in their deen, whoever takes this path of spirituality, whoever starts doing zakar, whoever starts developing themselves, this is a state that comes to majority of the people. They, you know, they just don't want to do anything. Vacations, holidays, Niagara Falls, huh? Legoland's, Disney World, it doesn't, in, they, they're not interested in that at all. So much so that they're not interested in their, like, being with their spouses. 
So this is a state that does come. But then we have to live in people and have to fulfill their rights as well. Whatever rights, if they have demand something, we have to give them their rights and we have to be with them. And we have to play with kids and you have to take them out and, you have, and people invite you, you have to go and accept their invitations. But this state is anabad. Ruju, always heart connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always. Initially, you have to remind yourself of that. Initially, you have to remind yourself of that. Oh, Allah Ta'ala is looking. kuntum. He is with you wherever you are. Always have to keep thinking, keep thinking, keep thinking. And a time comes when you do zikr, muraqba, and, you know, continuously doing tawbah all the time. As soon as you sleep tawbah. As I said, istighfar every day. This is another, one of the other ma'ulat that we do, right? Hundred times istighfar in the morning and the evening. So we are, if we are doing it in a proper way, then it's doing tawbah every day, morning, evening, morning, evening, morning, evening, thinking about your sins, thinking about your shortcomings, thinking about your heedlessness. Astaghfirullah, I'm sorry, Allah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Then you're doing muraqabah. And all of that combined, and as I said, reminding yourself of the awareness of Allah Ta'ala, a time comes when it becomes very natural. It becomes very, very natural. Then you are just cut off from the players of dunya. This is tabattul. This is tabattul. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Muzammil to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَذْكُرْ إِسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا That do the zikr of the name of your Rabb and achieve the state of tabattul. What is tabattul? Tabattul means that you are absolutely cut off from the creation and you are absolutely connected to the Creator. You are 100% cut off from the creation and you are 100% connected to the Creator. This is tabattul. That's what Allah Ta'ala wanted from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. What does it mean? Did Allah Ta'ala ask him to go and live in a mountain? No. Of course, one the, his job was to invite people towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Dawat and Dawat is to be with people. So that means that despite of the fact that Allah Ta'ala ordered him to be with people, but at the very same time Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ordered him to achieve the state of Tabattul. Yani khalwat dar anjuman. Isolation amongst people. You are with people, but your heart is not with the people. You are talking to people, but your heart is connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is anabat. The tabattul amongst people. Al-inabatu, our mashaykh say, al-inabatu ar-ruju'u ilallahi bil-qiyami bita'atihi wa ijtanabi ma'asiyatihi. That you all with ruju'u ilallah bil-qiyami. That you are always connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's an abad. And what is the result of that? Wukuf qalbi. What is the result of wukuf qalbi? Ta'at and ishtanab of the masiyat. That you are always submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are looking at what does Allah ta'ala want from me every single moment. Because you are in that state. Your always your heart is connected with Allah so you're always thinking, oh, what should I be doing at this, at this point? What does Allah Ta'ala want from me right now? So you're always in the state of submission. And if there is an, any, any opportunity of sinning, then what do you do? You cut off from that. For example, you are in, on your internet and suddenly something wrong pops up, right? Rather than, because you know that Allah Ta'ala is looking, rather than going and clicking and, and going into it, you just hit the cross, close the window, don't go into it. This is what happens. With mukuf qalbi, with inabat. Al ruju'u ila Allahi bil qiyami bi ta'atihi wa istinabi ma'asiyatihi. And then what happens as a result? When you are in that state. Then you want to do good. Why? Because your heart is connected to Allah. You have that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart. Then of course when you love somebody you want to please your beloved. Very natural. Very, very natural. Right? In that state, you know, between nikah and Joining, you know, if the wife says something, subhanAllah, you can do anything. Ah, I can get the stars, I can dig a river, whatever. Right? So when you, there is love, then you can do whatever. You want to do good more and more and more, all the time. And you will stay away from any sin, because sins displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And why would you want to make your beloved displeased? He will never ever want to do anything through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will become angry. So you get that ihtiyat that you're careful about everything that you do. Everything, and that leads to taqwa and inshallah we'll talk about that. And so, but that comes with inabat. So they're all stations. Right? With inabat gets taqwa. Or we get taqwa. We stay away from sins. Inshallah, as I said, we'll talk about that inshallah ta'ala. But their hearts are hooked up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hearts are hooked up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our mashayikh have said, Al-inabatu uquf al-qalbi ala Allahi azza wa jalla ka'ikaf al-badani fil masjid. In, inaba is that, that the heart is, is, is in the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's hooked up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like the badan, the body is hooked up, is attached, it is in the masjid in i'tikaf. In i'tikaf you're not allowed to come out unnecessarily without absolute necessity. Just like that, our hearts are hooked up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Inaba, just like bodies are in, in the masjid in I'tikaf. And then he says, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْقِفْ قَلْبُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَحْتَهُ عَكَفَ عَلَى تَمَاثِيلِ الْمُتَنَوِّعَةِ And if people's hearts are not hooked up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they'll be hooked up in something else. It is very natural of the heart. It is very natural of the heart that if it is not hooked up with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will definitely be hooked up with something else. Right? Isn't it true? That either there is light in the room and if you turn off the lights, what happens? There will be darkness. There will be something. It won't be that, you know, that there is nothing. There will be something. If there is space, then either it's vacuum, either it will be filled up with air or it will be filled up with something else. It is not very, not a natural phenomena that there is nothing in the room. There is nothing in, in a box. There is nothing in the cylinder. I mean, there will be something. If you don't take put anything, there will be air. It's just like that, if the heart is, does not have love of Allah Ta'ala, it's not hooked up with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, it will definitely be hooked up with something else. Very natural. So what is our job? Our job is to hook it up with Allah Ta'ala. So first thing, Tawbah, remove all the sins, change your direction, start walking towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and then you force yourself to remember Allah Ta'ala, to remind yourself that, oh, you know, Allah Ta'ala is looking at me. Always have this feeling of, huwa ma'akum, aina ma kuntum. You know, tell yourself, Allah Ta'ala is with me all the time, is with me wherever am I. And slowly and grow gradually, inshallah Ta'ala, the heart will be in the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. There are two types of inabats. There are two types of inabat. One is called inabatun li rububiyyatihi. Inabatun that inabat, that going back, that connection with Allah Ta'ala who is our Rabb. Because He is our Rabb. Because He is our Rabb. That's why hearts are connected. And this is very natural. This inabat, that connection with Allah Ta'ala is very, very natural. Other than the people who are absolutely atheists. Absolutely atheists who don't believe in any anybody. And there are very few of them, by the way, in the world. Everybody believes in Allah Ta'ala, though they may associate partners with Allah. You name it. Christians, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists. You know, other religions as well, they do believe in Allah, though they associate partners. But that is very, very natural that people, they believe in God. Right? So this inabatu li rububiyyatihi, it is that connection with Rabb, with, that, with, with, taking that Allah Ta'ala is my Rabb, it's very, very natural. And our mashayikh have said, وَهِيَ إِنَابَةُ الْمَخْلُوقَاتِ كُلِّهَا يَشْتَرِكُ فِيهَا الْمُؤْمِنُ وَالْكَافِرُ وَالْبَرُّ وَالْفَاجِرُ Oh, everybody is, is together in that. They all share that. This inaba li rububiyyatihi, it is common for everybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in the Quran as well. Allah ta'ala says, وَإِذَا مَسَّ النَّاسَ دُرٌ دَعَوْ رَبَّهُمْ مُنِيبِينَ إِلَيْهِ That when people, they, they are, uh, when, 
wa idza man massan nas durrun da'u rabbahum munibina ilayhi that when people are touched with harm or sorry wa idza massan nas durrun when harm touches people da'u rabbahum munibina ilayhi then they call on their rabb munibina ilayhi with an awat yani connecting their themselves to their rabb right for example people are in the plane and suddenly there's very strong turbulence you will find that you know all of the people who are in the plane would be suddenly you know they will their eyes will open and start all will start asking allah taala they will all get go go into their prayers majority of them majority of them very natural allah taala mentions that in the quran as well that you know when people are going in a ship and suddenly the ship is hit with flood uh, sorry with the uh, turbulence in the in the ocean then all of them they call on allah taala mukhlis with mukhl as mukhlis with sincerity with a lot of sincerity and as soon as allah subhanahu wa taala saves them from that position they start doing shirk again allah taala says that in the quran they start doing shirk again but that is natural this inabatun li rububiyyatihi it is very natural everybody hooks up with allah subhanahu wa taala at certain time even as he said as a, as a, our mashayikh have said it is it is something yashtariku fiha al mu'minu wal kafiru wal barru wal fajiru even righteous people and sinful, sinful people people who never pray muslims say for example muslims never pray never fast whatever they are sinning day and night but you know when say for example somebody gets sick in the family now subhanallah everybody is praying everybody is praying and say somebody gets to a stage that he is unrecoverable the doctor say and sorry but you know you he cannot be recovered so what do they say allah give mercy allah's will whatever he does what can we do subhanallah i've seen people that like, been uh, with people in in the funerals after they put the dead body in the grave they say allah ke hawale you know and then you just give him to allah taala So why don't we give to Allah subhanahu wa taala before when we are alive? Am Allah ke hawale pehle kyun nahi karte apne aap ko? Kabar mein rakh ke Allah ke hawale. This I'm talking about those people who who don't obey Allah subhanahu wa taala normally. But then a time comes then they're also they have rujoo ila Allah, right? So this is inabatun li rububiyyatihi. But there is another inabat which is inabatun inabatul ubudiyyati wal muhabbati. This is an inabat. This is a ruju. This is connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Out of us being His slaves, and because of that love that we have in our hearts for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and this is the shan of the awliya. This is the attribute of the awliya. This is what the people who ha- who who are the beloveds of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala they do it. That their connection with Allah Taala is of muhabbat, of love. and ubudiyat that i am connected to allah taala because he is my rabb and and i am his slave that i am his slave and i love allah subhanahu wa taala so there are two things everybody ibn abul qayyim al jawzi rahimahullah taala he writes that the deen religion has two parts religion has two parts one is ibadat and the second is isti'anat yani one is that you worship allah taala you you do his ibadat and the second is that you seek his help in surah al fatiha what do we say iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in that's deen that you alone do we worship you alone are the one that we do ibadat of and you alone is the one that we seek help from iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in that's the whole deen that is whole deen and he said that al inabatu ibadatun inaba is ibadat wa tawakkalu isti'anatun and then reliance on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that seeking help that is ti'anat inshallah we'll talk about this in another station tawakkul that is another maqam in this journey towards allah taala that's another station that is in this journey towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but he says at tawakkalu nusfu dini wa nusfu thani al inabatu the tawakkul is the half of deen and the second part is an inaba So a person who gets that in the state of inabat who reaches the station of inabat ila Allah 
then it is as if he has achieved half of the deen. And when people have tawakkul, reliance, complete reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is as if they have achieved the other part of the deen as well. Then a whole deen. So, so if people have this ruju ilallah, inabat ilallah, then it is a huge thing, it's such a blessing, such a maqam in this journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're always thinking about Allah. Your heart is filled with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that you do is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You meet with people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You get married for the sake of Allah ta'ala. You have children for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not for your personal reasons. You, if you are thinking about Allah, when Allah ta'ala gives you children, you are, you want to dedicate them in the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you earn money, earn wealth, you want to spend it in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your time, your energy, your efforts, every single thing, every single second is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a maqam. What a maqam. And it comes very quickly. SubhanAllah, it's not very far. Step number two after tawbah. You start working. But for that, you have to do zikr. You must do zikr. Muraqabah is... That. That's why muraqabah is so important. People don't even give time to muraqabah. This comes so quickly. This comes so quickly. This is fana filna. Then another terminology, you know, just that you are immersed in the remembrance of Allah. This is fana filna. This is inabat Allah. Some of the mashayikh have said that the difference between tawbah and inaba is that anna ta'iba yarji'u min khawf al then a person does tawbah fearing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal munibu yarji'u istihya'an li karami ta'ala. But a person who is connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has that anabat ilallah, he leaves sin because of the haya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, oh, subhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala is giving me every single thing. Every single blessing is from Allah. My eyes, my ears, my nose, my tongue, my, my limbs, my heart, my intellect, my wealth, my house, my spouse, my children, the air, the sun, the moon, the stars. Everything is from Allah Ta'ala. How can I disobey Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? This is an abad. This is an abad. Har cheez Allah Ta'ala ne diya mein kaise na farmani karo Allah ki? How is it possible that I can disobey that of my Creator who has blessed me with so many gifts? This is Inabat. That's what happens with Anabat. Some have said that there are three darajat of Ruju'ah. Any connection with Allah. Number one, At-Tawbah. Ruju'un min al-Ma'asiyati ila ta'ati. Number one is that Tawbah is that connection and is returning back, Ruju, ter- connecting to Allah Ta'ala or returning from sins to disobedience. Wal inabatu min al ghaflati ila dhikri. It is turning from heedlessness in the state of remembrance. And then he said there is a third darja, third rank, which is al awbatu. Wal awbatu min al ghaybati ila al mushahadati. That ghayba means that you are in the state of, and your thoughts are all scattered. As Ahmad Ajib rahimahullah ta'ala also said, you're all scattered and now you have jamiat. You have this focused thoughts. This is awba. And that's why Abu Qasim al-Qushayri rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that at tawbah tu sifatul mu'mineen. Tawbah is an attribute of every believer. Allah Ta'ala says, وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ All of you mu'minun do tawbah towards Allah Ta'ala. Yani, رُجُوعُ مِنَ الْمَعْسِيَةِ إِلَى الطَّاعَةِ From sins towards obedience of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But, إِنَابَةُ صِفَةُ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ Anabat is the sift of the awliya. That's why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ Munib, udkhuluha bisana. And who will come to Allah Ta'ala with a munib heart, with the heart of an abad. And that khushu in his, uh, and who is always, who have that khushu, man khashya rahman bil ghaib. Who has khashiyat of Allah Ta'ala. Then Allah Ta'ala will enter into paradise. And he said, was, well, awbatu sifatul anbiya, this awba. 
like always have this focus, always have the focus, 100%. This is the sifat of the Anbiya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, right, Allah about Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salam, inna wajadnahu sabira ni'mal abd, innahu awab. That we found him very patient, despite of the fact that he was hit with so many calamities, he was so patient. Ni'mal abd, what a beautiful man, what slave was he, innahu awab. He was awab. He was always completely focused on Allah Ta'ala. He knew whatever is coming to me is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Right? Surah Sa'ad. Remember, just read that. Allah Ta'ala mentions about so many anbiya and after that Allah Ta'ala says, Innahu awwab, innahu awwab. They all have that awwab. So, there are three darajat then. Number one, tawbah. And that is for people, normal, common people, for all of us. And the second is inaba, that we leave this state of heedlessness and come into remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. That, the, but that complete remembrance, wukuf qalbi, as we say it. All the time. We have this remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then the third is which, which, what that we should try to achieve, which is awba. That our, our thoughts are always focused. They're not scattered. Always, not just random thing coming into our head for no reason. We should always be thinking about Allah Ta'ala. We should always be focused on Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that's what some mashayikh say that at tawbah to ala thalasati aqsamin. Tawbah is, in fact, they said this tawbah that returning is of three types. Awwaluha at tawbah to, yani one is the tawbah itself. Wa awsatuha al inabatu wa akhiruha al awbatu. So, you know, if people get some of this share of the Anbiya, what a beautiful thing to have. And al-ulama wa rasatul Anbiya, scholars, mashayikh, ulama, are the inheritors of the Prophet. What do they inherit from the Prophet? Ilm. Right? Ilm of the outward and the ilm of the zahir and ilm of the batin. So this is also from the warasatul Anbiya, that we have this awba. And then our Mashaikh have said, Al-Inabatu min sunnah lil mursaleen. It is from the sunnah of the prophets. All of the prophets. All of the prophets Allah Ta'ala had given them all of these maqamat. They were doing tawbah from one state to another. Remember the three states of tawbah. And then they were, they were munib and they were awab. All of them, they had inabat and they had Awwa, Allah Ta'ala says about Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salam, وَظَنَّ دَعُودُ أَنَّمَا فَتَنَّاهُ فَاسْتَغْفَرَ رَبَّهُ وَخَرَّ رَاكِعُ وَأَنَابُ That Dawood alayhi salam understood that this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they seek, sought forgiveness from Allah, and then what did he do? وَخَرَّ رَاكِعًا And he went into the sajda, وَأَنَابُ And then the state of inabat. Allah Ta'ala says about Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّا سُلَيْمَانَ وَأَلْقَيْنَا عَلَىٰ كُرْسِيهِ جَسَدًا ثُمَّ أَنَابْ That Sulaiman alayhi salam, I tested Sulaiman, and I put, وَأَلْقَيْنَا عَلَىٰ كُرْسِيهِ جَسَدًا I put that body on his chair, ثُمَّ أَنَابْ And then he returned then to Allah Ta'ala. Sayyidina Shuaib alayhi salam say, وَمَا تُوفِيقِي إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ مُنِيبٍ that to, to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my anabat. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah ta'ala said, Inna Ibrahim ala halimun, awahun munibun. Subhanallah. That Ibrahim was halim, is for, forbearing. Awah, he had, he was the one who was always crying, ah, ah, he had that state, very soft heart. He was always crying in love of Allah ta'ala, and that's, that's what awah means. Always have that softness of the heart. And he was munib. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam also made a dua, Rabbana alayka tabakkalna wa ilayka anabna wa ilayka al-masir. Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam said, Thalikum allahu rabbi alayhi tabakkaltu wa ilayhi unib. Many, many benefits of anabat. Of this state, fukhuf qalbi. Always in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala says, first of all, it's a hukam of Allah. Right? It is a hukam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Munibina ilayhi wa taquhu wa qimu salata wa la takunu min al mushrikeen. Always have this inabat. Allah ta'ala says that. And 
He says, وَاتَّقُوهُ and have taqwa of him and establish prayer and don't be become from the mushrikeen. So when people have an abat in reality, they are fulfilling the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, when people are blessed with blessings, only those people realize that this is the blessing from Allah Ta'ala if they have inabat. If people don't have inabat, if they don't have muqub qalbi, don't have the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they can never ever think, know that this is a blessing from Allah. And that's why people become arrogant people. That's why people start making all of these statements that they make, oh me, my, etc. Right? Why? Because they don't have inabat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُنَزِّلُ لَكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ رِزْقًا And He is the one who gave, sends down risk from the, from the, from the heavens. وَمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ إِلَّا مَنْ يُنِيبُ And only that person understands that who is munib, who has inabat, who has ruju إِلَى Allah, who is always thinking about Allah ta'ala. Nobody else understands this. If people are advised, if people are given some nasihat, you know, the seed, listening to nasiyat is something else and then taking that nasiyat into the heart is something else. And who gets that nasiyat into their heart? Many people come and listen to many talks. But who actually is able to change their life? Who have in Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tab siratan wa dhikra li kulli abdin munib. This is, uh, this is basirat. It's a reminder. And it's a tabsira, it's a basirat. Yani, only those people have that inner sight and only people are able to understand it and take uh, take heed from that, take advice from that, who who, who are Abdul Munib, who are the people always in the state of inabat have this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given glad tidings in the Quran for the people of inabat. Allah ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ اجْتَنَبُوا الطَّاغُوتَ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوهَا وَأَنَابُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ لَهُمُ الْبُشْرَى Allah Ta'ala says that those people who stay away from worshipping shaitan and always have this anabat in Allah, there is glad tidings for them. Oh, what paradise, maghfirat of Allah, ridwan of Allah, uh, contentment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should have this want that we get into this state. This is just the starting point. Where are we standing? This is step number two after tawbah. And we don't know what we're doing, what are we doing? We are thinking, oh, you know, pata nahi kiske baare mein baat ho rahi, who are we talking about? Mostly angels. Huh? No. This is me and you. So that is a sign if we don't have inabat ilallah, that is a sign that we are, we are yet not started our journey towards Allah. It's station number one. We have just gotten into this metro towards Allah. The first station... You know, getting into the metro is tawbah. Getting into that train is tawbah. Now, at least you have gotten into it, started to change the direction of your journey towards Allah Ta'ala. That is tawbah. So, you have gotten into the train. Now, we are waiting for the first station to come. And looks like it's not coming. How far is that? And this is just the first station. If the first station is too far, then how can we reach our destination? Subhanallah. So please we have to have. Allah Ta'ala says that Hidayat, guidance is for those people who have inabat. قُلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُدِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِي إِلَيْهِ مَنْ أَنَاب Allah Ta'ala says that tell that indeed Allah Ta'ala is the one who misguides whoever He wants and He guides towards Him مَنْ أَنَاب who have the state of inabat in Allah. And then Allah Ta'ala, whoever has inabat, then Allah Ta'ala also makes them, this person, a guide for other people as well. Nobody can become a true guide unless and until they have inabat. How can a person graduate from their madrasa, get the title of an alima, a maulana, a mufti, if he does not or she does not have inabat in Allah? How can they ever teach people? How can they become a guide? They're misguiding people, honestly. If they, because Allah Ta'ala says, وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيْهِ You follow the path of those people who have inabat إِلَى اللَّهِ Yani, don't take that person as your guide who don't that, who does not have inabat, inabat إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيْهِ 
follow the path of those who who have this connection to me, who have this inabat towards me. And by the way, this is also a sign that, you know, the hidayat or guidance does not come from books. It does not come from books. Some people say, oh, I have Bukhari Sharif, I have Muslim Sharif, I have, you know, I have, I have the tafsir of the Qur'an. Well, people don't even need tafsir of Qur'an. I know the translation. And that's enough. Allah Ta'ala is saying, وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيْهِ Follow the path of those people who connect to me, who have an awad towards me. Allah Ta'ala's hukam. كُونُ مَعَ sadiqeen. Hook yourself up with the truthful people. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. Allah Ta'ala is guiding people towards other people, not towards books. Allah Ta'ala is not saying, you know, just read books and that's enough. Why did Allah Ta'ala send prophets then, if the books were to be enough? What tabi' sabila man anaba ilay follow the path of those people who do who have inaba towards me. And again, at the end, as I said before, the paradise is for the people of Inabat. This is what was promised for you and is for every awab, every hafiz. It is for the per- person who, who used to have that state of awba and, and they used to protect. Who are those? Man khashiyar rahman bil ghayb. Who had that khashiyat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ghayb? Wa jaa bi qalbim munib. And who came to Allah ta'ala with that qalb munib, with the heart of inabad. Udkhulu habi salam, enter into paradise with salam, with peace, with safety. Dalika yawmul khulud. Allah Akbar. So please, we have to get this state of inabat al Allah. Always thinking about Allah Ta'ala. Where are we? What are we doing? Where, are, where do we stand? Honestly, we have to ask this question from ourselves. You know, and the, the life of Inabat is the life of Barakat. The life of the remembers, always the quf qalbi, continuous connection with Allah Ta'ala is where the Barakat comes in. You know, Hazrat, Hazrat Mushad Alam, Hazrat Mulana Gulab Habib, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, you know, in his last age, he, Allah Ta'ala gave him a life of 90 plus years. And in his, Hazrat Ji says that in his last, uh, years, in his later years, after 90, he used to get a hadith printed and used to distribute to the people. And he used to be very, very happy while distributing that hadith. And his hadith in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad, rahmatullah alayhi, he says as that hadith is something like that, is narrated by Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that ma min mu'ammarin yu'ammaru fil islami arba'ina sanatan, إِلَّا صَرَفَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ ثَلَاثَةَ أَنْوَاءٍ مِنَ الْبَلَاءِ الْجُنُونَ وَالْجُذَامَ وَالْبَرَصَ Allah Ta'ala, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that مَا مِنْ مُعَمَّرٍ يُعَمَّرُ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ أَرْبَعِينَ صَنَ سَنَةً When a person in Islam reaches 40 years of age, yani a person in the state of Islam reaches 40 years of age, then Allah Ta'ala saves him or protects him from three calamities. Junoon, Judam, Bars. Insanity, any madness, and Judam or Bars are two different types of leprosy. So they're, just the effect is different, the Judam and the Bars. Allah Ta'ala saves him from insanity, from madness, and leprosy. If a person in Islam reaches 40 years of age, he has been saying, La ilaha illallah for 40 years, Allah Ta'ala is saying, you know, He's not an insane person. He's not an insane person. I will save his sanity. I will save him from Judam and Bars. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَإِذَا بَلَغَ خَمْسِينَ سَنَةً لَيْهِنَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْحِسَابَ When a person reaches 50 years of age in Islam, Allah Ta'ala gives him another blessing. That Allah Ta'ala makes his hisab easy. His accountability easy. You know, Hazadi says that, you know, a person who is working for you, for a long time, 
then you don't hold them to account much. 50 years, if a person has been working for you, if he does something wrong, he says, you know, he's been working for 50 years, koi baat nahi, it doesn't matter. Right? SubhanAllah. Allah Ta'ala says, Lay, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Layyan Allahu Alayhi Al-Hisab. Allah Ta'ala makes his accountability easy. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَإِذَا بَلَغَ سِتِّينَ رَزَقَهُ اللَّهُ الْإِنَابَةَ إِلَيْهِ بِمَا يُحِبُّ Then a person reaches 60 years of age, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He blesses him with inabat. When Allah Ta'ala starts loving him. And he had 60 when people saying, La ilaha illallah, praying five times a day, and from the time that he was 10 years of age, he reaches 60, every single day of his life, gets up in the morning at Fajr, Allah, salatu khayrum minan nahu, Allahu Akbar, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, next day, same routine, early morning, Fajr, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, every single day of his life, subhanAllah, until 60 years of age, Yani for last 50 years he's been doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Allah Ta'ala says, alright, I'll give you inabat. I will, you will never forget me now. And then, فَإِذَا بَلَغَ سَبْعِينَ سَنَةً أَحَبَّهُ اللَّهُ وَأَحَبَّهُ أَحْلُ السَّمَاءِ When a person reaches in that state, in that state of true Islam, yani. When he reaches 70 years of age, Allah Ta'ala starts loving him and the angels of the heavens also start loving him. SubhanAllah. 70 years, day in and day out, worshipping Allah, being obedient slave of Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala starts loving that person and angels start loving that person. فَإِذَا بَلَغَتْ ثَمَانِينَ قَبِلَ اللَّهُ حَسَنَاتِهِ فَتَجَاوَزَ عَنْ سَيِّئَاتِهِ And when he becomes 80 years of age, then Allah Ta'ala accepts his good deeds and Allah Ta'ala forgives him of his sins. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَإِذَا بَلَغَ تُسْعِينَ When he reaches 90, غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ This was the glad tidings that was given to whom? To the Prophet. غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ Every single thing that you have done, all erased, all the things that you might have done in the past, wrong things, or you may do in the future, no accountability whatsoever after this. When he reaches 90, Allah Ta'ala just, just ignores altogether. 90 years he's been saying, La ilaha illallah, day in, day out, try to be my obedient slave. I don't even look into what he did. And then, <laughs> that's what, why the Mushtaj Alam Rahmatullah was so happy about, because he was 90 plus. فَإِذَا بَلَغَ تِسْعِينَ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن ذَمِّهِ وَمَا تَأَخَرَ He used to distribute that, look, I'm 90 plus. Read this hadith. Be my witness. And then the hadith ends with that for this person, for this person who is 90 plus, وَسُمِّيَ أَسِيرُ اللَّهِ فِي أَرْضِهِ وَشُفْرِ عَلِ أَهْلِ بَيْتِهِ That he is named, this person who has been living a life of true Islam for 90 years, he is named أَسِيرُ اللَّهِ فِي أَرْضِهِ That he is the prisoner of Allah Ta'ala in the, on the earth. He's just, you know, he's there because he's a prisoner. What happens in prison? You know, despite of the fact that you may get everything, despite of the fact that you may get food, drink, clothes, a bed to sleep on, right? but one thing that he never gets is what? He's not able to meet with his beloveds. He's not able to meet with his family. So that's why, this is the worst thing that the prisoner feels. So I'm not able to be with my family. So that's why he is Asirullah fi ardi. He's just a prisoner there waiting to meet with me. He has been with me for so long. Now he's just waiting. He's a prisoner. And then Washuk bi ali ahli baytihi and <coughs> Allah Prophet Sallallahu said that Allah Ta'ala accepts his shafa'at for his Ahlul Bayt, for his family, for a person who reaches ninety years of age. So Inabat is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well.
So initially, you have to work on yourself. Initially, you have to force. And wherever you find that you're heedless, I mean, suddenly you realize, oh my God, for the last one hour I've been heedless. I did not think about Allah. I was watching a football game and I didn't even know that, you know, I had to think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Force yourself back into it. And again, you know, maybe that one hour will become 30 minutes. Then force yourself into it. That 30 minutes may become 15 minutes. Force yourself back into it. You have to force yourself into the remembrance of Allah, into that wukuf qalbi initially. But then, once you start having feeling that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it becomes a habit. It's very habitual. Then Allah subhanahu and then Allah ta'ala, Allah ta'ala talks about these people. Who are these? Alladheena yaskuroon Allah qiyaman wa qu'udan wa ala junubihim. They're always remembering, remembering Allah ta'ala standing, sitting, laying down on their sides. Allah ta'ala says they are those people, the rijal. Yeah, they're men of Allah. La tulhihim tijaratun wa la bayun and zikrillah. That buying, selling, commerce, trade, business, shops, colleges, studies, families, husbands, wives, children. Nothing deviates them from the zikr of Allah. Nothing deviates them from the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidah Aisha say, says about him, radiyallahu anha, kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yaskurullah azza wa jalla ala kulli ahyanihi. That say, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would remember Allah ta'ala in all states. Every single state, he would remember Allah ta'ala. There are some things that you can never forget. Never forget. This is fana fillah. This is the state of fana. That you're always remembering Allah Ta'ala. This terminology in the sub of fana is this. Is this. And then baqa is also this, but there is a little difference that now you're remembering Allah, but as if, but you look like a very common man. So initially in fana, you know, you get, you feel a little lost. Lost in a sense that, you know, because you're remembering Allah Ta'ala all the time, it's very difficult to create that balance. You know, should I think about Allah, should I think about people? Right, you're not able to create that balance. But when, you know, people get into, so when the baqa happens, baqa is that, although you are remembering Allah, but you're also able to communicate with people normally. That's why all of these mushrikeen were so amazed or amused at this very fact that how can this be a prophet when he looks like a very common man? Mali has a rasul. What sort of a rasul is that? That he eats food and he walks in the market, he goes and buys, sells in the market. What sort of a prophet is that? And Allah Ta'ala said, all of the prophets who came before, they would eat, they used to eat, and they used to also buy sell. So they look like very normal people. If you look like very common people, you will look at them and you will find, you know, they eat, they drink, they laugh, they joke, they, they, they have a wife, they have kids, you know, they, 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 they go and visit people, they accept the invitation of people for having meals and all of that. They may go out for, you know, to, just to relax, to maybe go in the mountains as well for like a couple of days to relax themselves. They look like very normal people. But what is the difference? Difference is that they have achieved the state of baqa. They had fana and they had baqa. They had, they, they had achieved those spiritual heights, you know, when they were always thinking about Allah Ta'ala, but then now has become, they have been able to learn the balance that their hearts are in absolute remembrance of Allah, is not in heedless state, but outwardly they're also able to to interact with people in a normal way as well. Right? Multitasking. <laughs> able to do multitasking if you're talking to Americans. Depends. <laughs> so this is, our mashayikh have achieved this day. Our mashayikh have achieved this state. In fact, that's why they have said, ki jo dam ghafil, eh? so dam, so dam kafir. That if any stay, any breath that is taken in the state of ghaflat, it is as if he has spent that moment in kufr. Subhanallah. Jo dam ghafil, so dam kafir. So dam kafir. Whatever dumb, any breath that is taken in the state of ghaflat, it is as if that breath has been taken in the state of kufr. Subhanallah. <laughs> Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says that, the hadith in, in Jatrami Sharif as well, in Abu Dawud Sharif as well, that tanamu aina ya wala ya qalbi, my eyes sleep but my heart does not sleep. 
My eyes sleep at night, but my heart does not sleep. It is always in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If anybody sleeps around you, it's your responsibility to wake him up, please. No muraqba in bayanat, please. You go in muraqba and sakina is falling. And sakina makes people sleep. And especially the women's side. They don't sleep at night and they want to sleep in the bayanat. Not allowed. And by the way, it also reminds you, you have to follow the schedule, please. This is la khanqahi nizam. The whole, one of the ideas of these two days is that as if we are in a khanqah. Right, so um, one of the things that is taught in Hanukkah is discipline. We have, you know, we have a schedule. We made an effort to to make the schedule and print the schedule, and mashallah, somebody made an effort to post it there on the wall as well for a reason. Right, that we follow it. One thirty lunch means one thirty lunch. Two thirty talk means two thirty talk. Three thirty. Wudu, 3.45 prayers, 4 o'clock beyond, it means something. So please, follow it. Otherwise, if you don't want to follow it, don't disturb others. You are disturbing the whole schedule. To people, our mashayikh have tried to achieve that in our Allah. Once Had Mala Shafali Tanvi Sabrahmatullah, he was Had Mala Mufti Shafi Sabrahmatullah, he came to visit him. And they were going for a walk, a morning walk in Thana Bhavan. So Had Mala Shafali Tanvi Sab was walking in the front, and Mala Mufti Shafi Sab was behind him. Suddenly, Had Mala Shafali Tanvi Sab stopped. He took out a paper from his pocket, a pen, and he wrote something. And he put it back in the pocket and started walking again. Then he asked, Muti Shabhi Sahib was looking, but you know, mashallah, adab is adab. They were people of adab. Didn't say anything. And Muti Shabhi Thanvi Sahib himself told him to teach him. Do you know what did I do? He said, oh, so I cannot understand what did you do, why did you stop, what did you write? He said, I was thinking suddenly, an, an ilmi thought came into my mind. That, you know, what if this happens? Like, what is the masala of the shariat? What is the hukam of the shariat if this thing happens? He said, I, this is the time in my morning walk that I want to just totally focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I did not want my mind to get distracted from the thought of Allah. So I took down paper and pen. I wrote that masala, yani this thing have come into my mind. I thought I'll think about it later. It's not the time to think about it. And wrote it, put it in my pocket. Then whenever I'll get free time, I'll think. I just, so that I'm not disturbed at this moment. Subhanallah. This is how people were focused. And today we have like 100,000 thoughts going into our head. All the time thinking about 100 things. If we are talking, thinking about 100 things, how can we focus? And that's why, another reason why is muraqaba so important. It is an, along with it, that it's a zikr, but it also helps and is achieving that state of wakuf qalbi. Please spend time on muraqaba. Don't take it lightly. I've requested over and over and over again. Please. People of Inabat are amazing. You know, one of the sheikh, he said that I was traveling in the mountains of Central Asia. He said that I've met a person of Allah. And this person of Allah was reciting a few, uh, he was reciting a poem. And subhanAllah, ajeeb, ajeeb poem. See, he reads, Wallahi ma tala'at shamsu wa la gharabat illa wa anta fi qalbi wa waswasi That by Allah, neither the sun rises and it does not set except that you are in my heart and in my thoughts. Wala jalastu ila qawmin uhaddithuhum إِلَّا وَأَنْتَ حَدِيثِ بَيْنَ جُلَّاسِ And by Allah, that I never sit with people, but I talk about you, Ya Allah. And then I talk to with them, except that you are my talk amongst those people that I sit with. He said, وَلَا حَمَمْتُ بِشُرْبِ الْمَاءِ مِنْ عَتَشٍ 
illa ra'aytu khiyalan min kafil ka'si that oh my beloved when i am in have that deep thirst and whenever i put my mouth to this bowl of water i look at your picture in that in that bowl of water wala dhakartuka mahzunan wala taraban illa wa hubbuka maqroonun bi anfasi and oh my beloved that I not remembered you, have not spoken about you, have not thought about you in the state of happiness and in the state of sadness. But in my breath is, is your love. Every single breath of mine is mixed up with your love. And then he said, فَلَوْ قَدَرْتُ عَلَى الْإِتْيَانِ زُرْتُكُمْ Sahban ala al-wajhi aw mashiyan ala al-ra'si. No, my beloved, if ever you will call me to have your vision, that I'll come to you walking on my cheeks and walking on my head. So please work hard. You have to achieve that state of ihsan. أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك. That you should spend every single second of your life in a state that as if you are looking at Allah and if you are not able to look at Allah, Allah is looking at us. Har lamhe, har bakt, every single second. So for that, we need to make an effort. One of the things that helps is, is number one, sunnas. Number two, masnoon duas. Sunnas and masnoon duas. Har tiz sunnat ke mutabik kare. Do everything according to sunnat. Every single thing. Starting from getting up in the morning to sleeping at night. Every single thing. Get up in the morning. If you have to go to the toilet, make sure that you're putting your left foot in first. The way that you relieve yourself, make sure that you're not facing the Qibla. Your back is not towards the Qibla. Wash yourself in a Sunnah way. Even if you have to use toilet rolls, right, this Sunnah to, to wipe first and then wash. It is the Sunnah. So, make sure that if you're using, use odd numbers of toilet paper. Either three, three is minimum, then either three or five or seven. Little as possible, don't do israf. But, make sure that you are careful about that you're using odd numbers. Think about it. It's sitting, just gotten up from sleep, possibly not you're not able to come back into your senses properly, like in think. Odd numbers, then wash properly. Make sure that the filth is not splash around. Think, reflect, is it okay? Then the way that you do wudu, it should also be sunnah way, properly, three times every limb, not more than three times, wash properly, nothing remains dry. Start with bismillah, end with a dua, then if you have to come out of the toilet, then make sure that you put your right foot first out and then make dua. Entering into the toilet, also make dua. Changing your clothes, make sure that you're vigilant that you are taking off your left side first. When you're putting on clothes, make sure that you're putting on your right side first. Putting on shoes, make sure that you're putting your right shoe first. Taking off, make sure that you're putting your, taking off your left shoe first. Every single thing follows sunnahs. Eating, sit, say bismillah, then eat. Even if you are in the kitchen, and even if you have to taste food, like to check that how, if the spices are okay or not. Sit, please, sit and make, get into the habit. 
it is not haram to do that, to, you know, to taste it while standing. But because we are on this path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are on this journey, we have to force ourselves into that state of remembrance of zikr, of uqub, qalbi. For us, just take it as if it is necessary to do that. As if it is necessary to do that. Even if you have to taste food, sit, take it, sit down, say bismillah, then eat it, then test it. Every single thing should be done in a sunnah way. Getting into the car, right foot first, bismillahi, Allahu akbar, dua, leaving house, bismillahi, tawakkaltu alallahi la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi, going into the masjid, right foot first, coming out of the masjid, left foot first. All of these things, please, it is necessary. This helps us in the state of, the state of uqub qalbi. People being you know, getting intimate with their spouse, there is a dua at that time as well. We are not heedless people. We are not heedless people. There is a dua for that time. So, sunnas and masnoon duas. Sunnas and masnoon duas. Absolutely necessary. Please, try to go pray in the masjid. Try to pray in the masjid unless there is, you know, necessity. Unless there is a necessity. That's it. Try to pray in the masjid. In jamaat at least. Right, for example, there's a gathering at a place. Jamaat at, the, when there are people gathered, it is allowed to make jamaat. Some people have always have this confusion. That, you know, oh, can we make jamaat or not? We can make jamaat. So, so at least in jamaat. Please. So these are the things that we must implement in our lives. Must. If we want to go towards Allah Ta'ala. If you want to read the station number one. SubhanAllah. There's so many of them and we are stuck as if our, we have, you know, our, our train isn't moving. It is moving. It's not that. If you have taken, if you have done tawbah and especially if you have taken birth and we have started doing our mamulat, it's not that our train isn't moving. Our train is moving. It's just that it's very, very slow. So you need to add in a little bit of more fuel into it. Huh? Force yourself. Push the train a little bit harder. It's stuck. Something is blocking. So please move. Please move fast. Right? To follow sunnahs and get into the habit of masnoon du'as. Every single du'a. Many people, they know du'as, they don't read it. You ask a kid, you know, do you know the du'a of leaving the house? He will tell you because he's memorized that in the class. Have you memorized du'as? Huh? Would he ask them, do you read all of them? Mm. Right? See, he's saying yes. Our state is no, no different. No different state. If I ask, all of us, we ask ourselves, how many du'as do we know? And possibly there will be a huge list. But how many du'as do we actually read, recite, when we, at the appropriate time? Not much, not many. Right? So please, this is one of those things that help us in achieving that state of anabat ilallah, ruju ilallah, connection with Allah, wukuf, qalbi, to get the state of fana and baqa. And you know, and then also do mamulat, please. Muraqaba, please do muraqaba, please do your tasbihat. This is the goal of life. This is the goal of life. And once you achieve the state of fana, when people do the muraqaba on the first latifa, latifa qalb, you know, they are able to, if they really, really do it properly, they can achieve fana. You don't have to be in lesson number 25 in order to achieve fana. It, it, it comes on latifa number one. Can. If it's done properly. Some people are so impatient. Oh, I've been bad for six months. You're still never, you've not changed my lesson. So, why are you so worried about changing your lesson? So, how I can achieve the state of fana on lesson number one, or are you worried about moving on to lesson number two? 
and you have not yet achieved that state, and you want to move on, why? You know how much you know how much time did I spend on lesson number one? Three years. If you don't give lesson number two to person for like two years, he will run away. He will not come back. <laughs> you know, I should go to somebody else maybe. Many people they do that. They come and remind. Oh, you know, by the way, I'm I'm bad for three months. Chika, thank you very much for the reminder. They also remember the date that they took birth. You know, the flower day at this time. And they will remind you of that. The goal is this. You understand that, you know, why are they reminding <laughs> Should I continue with my lesson number one? Yes, please do. <laughs> SubhanAllah. It's a huge thing if you achieve inabat in Allah. What, so on, what a maqam. Fana alfani la yurad. Our mashayikh have said, once you stay, need the state of fana, then you don't come back from that. Yani, it is almost impossible to get in the state of heedlessness after that. That's what it means. Bhulana bhi chaho, bhulana sakoge. You'll never be able to forget Allah Ta'ala after that. No way. That's what Allah Ta'ala says. In ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan, the rosh shaitan, these are those of my slaves that you don't have any power of, over them. You go and try your level best. They have achieved that state that you cannot have any control over them anymore. Allah Ta'ala is saying that in the Quran. Subhanallah. So is it a small thing? And so all of you are worried about our new lessons. Muraqba, nobody does Muraqba. Five minutes, two minutes, one minute, half a minute, ten seconds. But then, you know, everybody is worried about going on to the next day, next lesson. So please, share some mushaykh that, you know, Mujadda Sani Ramatullah Ali writes an incident in his Maktubat that Abdullah Istakhri, Rahimatullahi Alayhi, you know, he was into that state that, you know, you remember the first day that I said that you get into that state of remembering Allah Ta'ala. It's so difficult to get in back on amongst people. To get in, any yani after fana you reach, achieve the baqa. Very difficult state. Right? People can get angry with you very easily. So, he wanted to have baqa, but he was in that state of fana. So he was trying his level best, making dua, Ya Allah, please. So one day he thought that let me distract myself from Allah Ta'ala. Let me <laughs> distract myself purposely, intentionally from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So one day he thought that some people were going for hunting, let me join that group. So that I would start thinking about the animals, start focusing on the animals. So he did all day long, but he could not distract himself from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So at the end of the day, when he could not distract himself from Allah, he made a dua. Imam Jadul al-Sani Ramatullah writes, he made a dua that, Ya Allah, please forgive the sins of that person. Forgive all of the sins of that person who can distract me from your zikr for one moment. <laughs> ya Allah, forgive the, all the sins of that person who can distract me from your zikr for one moment, Ya <laughs> But Sumal is so difficult that you're always thinking about Allah Ta'ala and Sumal, like there's your wife wanting to talk to you and you're going in a long drive with her and you are just quiet and this Sumal, like she gets so upset. I don't want to go with you anymore. Let's go back home. <laughs> difficult, isn't it? So, Sumal, but then may Allah Ta'ala give us that sir of fana but also give us baka as well, quickly. So that Make dua for that. That your, we have, your heart is not away from Allah, but you're also fulfilling the rights of the people. So, but, yeah, subhanAllah, what a beautiful life after that. What a beautiful life. Sometimes we are not able to achieve that state of anabad because our tawbah is not kamil. And majority of the time, this is the problem. I can tell you. That blocker, train isn't moving. You come out of the train and find out why the train isn't moving and there's a mountain in front of the train that's when you're hitting and stopping. And that mountain is that one sin that you have yet not done Tawbah from. That's the problem. That mountain is that sin. Sometimes it is the eyes, 
Sometimes it is the anger. Sometimes it is lack of humility. Sometimes it can be anything. Anything can be jealousy, can be ill feelings for people, can be anything. But, you know, there's something stopping that we are not able to achieve that state of anabat in Allah, that complete remembrance of Allah, that deep connection with Allah. Allah. Something is stopping us. So we have to find out ourselves what is that thing that we are not getting tawfiq. We are not getting tawfiq. So please, you know, we have to untie all the knots that are stopping us. All the knots. For example, you tie an animal. You put knots. You say, for example, you put 100 knots. And you say, oh, I untied 99 knots. Why is this animal still not moving? Well, my friend, there's one knot still there. Right? You have to untie that last knot as well before that animal will start moving, will, will start running. We say we have done Toba from 99 sins, 99% sins. But that 1%, what about that? That is that thing that is not letting us move on this journey towards Allah. Ye problem hai mari. This is the problem. And Hazrat Ji, he subhanAllah, he has mentioned that when people have this anabat in Allah, the life is beautiful and the ending is beautiful. The ending is beautiful as well. Hazrat mentions about this, he mentioned the story about his mother-in-law. His mother-in-law, you know, Hazrat, uh, the wife of Hazrat Khaja Abdul Malik Siddiqui Sabra Matullah. Hazrat Ji's uh, wife is the daughter of his grand sheikh. So, his mother-in-law, in his last stages, it's a long story, I'm not going to go into the detail of that. But in, in her last stages, you know, she was unconscious and people could hear hear her saying Allah, Allah, Allah. The voice was coming in her breath. And you know, Hazrat mentions that when she was on her deathbed, he said all of the med- the staff, the hospital staff, the nurses, the female nurses, will come, will take her hand, you know, put on her on their hands, will kiss her hands. You know, subhanAllah, she's unconscious. And with every breath that she's taking, Allah, Allah. So <laughs> Oh, the people are living life of Allah. Allah Ta'ala makes their death like that as well. Kama ta'ishun tamutun. The way that you live your life is the way that you're going to die. There was uh, one person in uh, Mahat, in Chang. His name was Zahir Samal, Zahir Sab. Subhanallah, and it's a long story again. He was, uh, his family was very rich. And, you know, brought up in luxuries. So he came to Hazrat Ji, took bath, and he said, you know, I want to, can I live with you in Jhang? So Hazrat Ji allowed him. And you know, it was initial times, not the Jhang of today, if you have visited that place, mashallah. If you had visited like there five years ago, still it was a very different place. So he came, and he said, I want to do khidmat of the madrasa of you. So Hazrat Ji allowed him. So he left all of his luxuries, he came. Khair, anyway, long story. And he did a lot of zikr, a lot of muraqba, and he stayed in the khidmat, in the sobat of Hazrat. And subhanAllah, he passed away in accident. He passed away in accident. Young man, young fellow. And he was in the hospital, and Hazrat Ji and some of the people went to the hospital. He had passed away. And they were showing that his brain is dead. But his heart was still moving. His heart was still moving. And they could not release him because they were saying the heart isn't moving, the heart is not stopping. How can we release him for burial? And I think, I think three days passed or something like that. They were not releasing him. Eventually, Hazrat himself went and he said to the doctors, you know what, his heart will never stop moving. His heart is never going to stop moving. A person who has done zikr day in and day out, his heart has done zikr day in and day out, how can his heart stop moving, release him? And then the doctors released him and they buried him. And he said the ulama when he was buried, he was the coffin was put on. He said, ulama, actually, when they were putting the coffin on, they touched his chest and it was still moving. <laughs> Subhanallah. How he said that I sign his release sheet. Please release him. 
they were asking for somebody's guarantee that you know he's not dead. <laughs> so he is dead. He's, he's brain dead. He's dead, absolutely dead. He said, I signed myself, and please relieve me. Release him. His heart is never going to stop moving. Subhanallah. You know, one of our, as he says that one of our, the Kaabarin has Mona Abdul Ghafur Madni Sahib Rahmatullah. He, when he passed away, same thing. He said, doctors did not release him for nine hours because his heart was moving. So one of his khulafat, Mona Abdullah Sahib Rahmatullah, he came and he said that a heart, That has given life to thousands of hearts. How can it stop? A heart that has made thousands of hearts alive. How can that heart die? Come on. And then these are the people that Allah Ta'ala protects them in their graves. Even the dust does not touch their coffin. The insects don't eat their bodies. So many incidents. Hazrat was mentioning the other day that when he was studying in the university or the college, there a flood came and some of the graves got open. He said, one of the graves got open and people saw that there was a person lying in that grave. And his even coffin was not dirty. Even the coffin was not dirty. In the dust. Buried in the dust. His coffin was not even dirty. He said, so many people went to see him. He said that I wanted to go but my father stopped me from going to have a look. Because he said that, you know, you don't know that how your heart will get affected by looking at that, mushahida. So, he said, my father stopped me from going there. He said, listen to my father. And, uh, and, but he went. So, as he said that I asked my father to please describe it to me at least, that how did he look like. He said, my father went and he looked and he came back and he told me this, that his, even his coffin wasn't dirty. Subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala protects these people. You know, the problem is that we are infected. We have bacteria of sins within us. We have bacteria of sins within us. That's why when we die, then insects come and eat us. For example, you have salt, right? You have sugar. You put it outside. Nothing happens for months sometimes. Right? For months, nothing happens. You can still use it. But you take yogurt, you buy yogurt or milk, you put it outside the refrigerator. What happens? In two hours, three hours, it starts smelling. Why? There was bacteria in that. And when it's kept in open, it makes it, it just destroys that. Right? You start, you start feeling that smell. It goes bad. Just like that, when we have bacteria of sins within us, as soon as they are outside refrigerators, as soon as, as far as they are within refrigerator, and basically as when we have life, it is as if we are in the refrigerator. But as soon as we die, as if we are taken out of that refrigerator, the shell of refrigeration, and the insects come and they start eating us, and we go bad. That's why some of the bodies, you can't even keep them, you know, uh, outside for like a few hours. Because they'll start smelling and then you know, people say, oh, go and bury them quickly, ASAP. Right. That is the problem. That we have these bacteria of sins. And people who are free from these bacteria, just like sugar, like salt, like flour, who does not have any bacteria, then nothing happens to their bodies. Nothing happens to their bodies. Very famous incident in, in Medina Manavara as well, right? A flood came long time ago. 
and one of some of the shuhada of Uhud, their bodies came out. And so much so that after like 60, 70 years, I think it is after Hijra, something like that. So, so don't quote me on the, on the, on the year. But a good 70, 60, 70, 80 years after Hijra, and their bodies came out, and they were still bleeding. The bodies were intact, and they were still bleeding when they came out. And they were buried again in that state. Subhanallah. Very famous incident. And many like that. Haji also mentioned that, you know, uh, in Lahore, there is a canal. And he said once a very strong thunderstorm came and some of very uh, big trees got uprooted. He said somebody that he knew, he said he, was, he had a habit of walking alongside the canal every morning. He said that after that night when there was a thunderstorm and many of the trees got uprooted, he said that I looked at one of the big thick trees who got, who got uprooted, very old tree. He said, I saw that there was a dead body in underneath that tree, and again, still with the coffin intact, the body intact, and the roots of the tree had surrounded that body. I said, I looked at it with, with my own eyes. He told Hazrat to himself. Sir, we, we, we have bacteria of sins, and we will get rotten very, very soon, as soon as we die. But when we are free of the bacteria of sins, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He protects these bodies. He protects these bodies. Even they don't even eat the kafan. So that, how does, how do we reach that state? By having an awat in Allah. Always have that remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not mean that we become angels. We will never become angels. We are not angels. We are human beings. But the beauty of an awat in Allah is that because we are in the state of remembrance of Allah, if we ever slip, because we are, we have that state, we will do astaghfirullah right away. If our tongue slips, say, it says something that's a lie, that was not right. Then I, I, my tongue slipped and said something which was against the truth. I will feel as if there was, there, there, somebody has put a mountain over my heart. Oh my God, I feel so heavy. Astaghfirullah, I'm sorry, ya Allah. I will not do it again, inshallah. Any time that my eyes slipped and looked at something that I should not have looked at, astaghfirullah. If I get angry at something, anger is one thing, but an expression of anger, unnecessarily, talking bad, talking in a bad tone to our wives, to our husbands, to our children, to people around us. As if we slip and do that, astaghfirullah. We always have this state of of remembrance of anabat. And if you ever slip, then you always remember and do istighfar and tawbah right away. So this is the this is what happens with anabat al Allah. That you stay out of that state of sins. And when you are st- out of that state of sins, as if you are keeping that bacteria of sins out of your system, and that is when Allah Ta'ala gives barakat in the life, Allah Ta'ala makes our death full of barakat. Allahumma barik lana fil mawti wa fima ba'd al maut. It's a dua that Allah put barakat in my death and what is after death. So Allah Ta'ala put barakat at the time of the death and after death. And Allah Ta'ala makes our graves from the garden of paradise and Allah Ta'ala also gives us that state. Man khashya ar-Rahman abil ghaib wa jaa'a bi qalbim munib udkhuluha bi salam. May Allah Ta'ala give us this state of anabat in Allah. The next state, how much time do we have? Maghrib is that? 614. The next state, the next maqam is Zuhud. Zuhud. Is the point number nine in the book. We can translate literally Zuhud as detachment from the world. 
detachment from the dunya. Like literal translation. But it says that Zuhdu Khulubul Qalbi Minat Aluki Bighairi Rabbi Ghairi Rabbi. Detachment is to free the heart of its ties to anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aw buru that dunya min al qalbi wa uzufu al nafsi anha. It is the heart's coolness towards the world and the ego's aversion to it. فَزُهْدُ الْعَامَّةِ تَرْكُ مَا فَضَلَ عَنِ الْحَاجَّةِ فِي كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَزُهْدُ الْخَاصَّةِ تَرْكُ مَا يَشْغَلُ عَنِ التَّقَرُّبِ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي كُلِّ حَالٍ وَزُهْدُ خَاصَّةِ الْخَاصَّةِ تَرْكُ النَّذْرِ إِلَى مَا سِوَى اللَّهِ فِي جَمِيعِ الْأَوْقَاتِ It's for the general people, for the common people. Zuhd means giving up possessions beyond what are absolutely necessary. And for the khas people, it means giving up everything that preoccupies them from approaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every state. And for the khasat al khas, from the elect of the elect, it means abstaining at every moment from beholding anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And said, وَحَاسِلُ الْجَمِيعِ بُرُودَةُ الْقَلْبِ عَنِ السِّوَى وَعَنِ الرَّغْبَةِ فِي غَيْرِ الْحَبِيبِ In a word, it is a coolness in the heart towards all but Allah and towards desiring anything except the beloved, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's saying, وَهُوَ السَّبَبُ الْمُحَبَّةِ كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ إِزْهَدْ فِي الدُّنْيَا يُحِبُّكَ اللَّهُ As Prophet, it is the, it is the reason of getting that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart, as per the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِزْهَدْ فِي الدُّنْيَا That you have zuhud in the dunya, and you detach yourself in the dunya, يُحِبُّكَ اللَّهُ Allah ta'ala will love you. Al hadith. وَهُوَ السَّبَبُ السَّيْرِ وَالْوَسُولِ إِذْ لَا سَيْرَ لِلْقَلْبِ إِذَا تَعَلَّكَ بِشَيْنْ وَسِبُ الْمَحْبُوبِ And he's saying that it is both the means by which we journey and, and, the, arri- and the arrival. And it is the means by which we travel towards Allah and is the means through, uh, through which we actually reach our destination. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's saying for a heart attached to something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no journey. For a heart that is attached to anything other than Allah Ta'ala, there is no journey. He is hooked, he is chained. He cannot move. Suhud. Detachment. What does that mean? What does that mean? You know, Allah Ta'ala has made this dunya. Allah Ta'ala has made this dunya in a way that everything is a test. Every single thing is a test from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala says that وَلَا نَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ What is the ayat? وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوْعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ I will test by the loss, by, by khawf, by fear, and by hunger. And losing of the wealth, and losing of lives, and losing of fruits, I will test. إِنَّمَا أَمْبَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ fitna. Allah Ta'ala says, your wealth, your children are a test. Everything, everything good is a test. And everything, the, every loss of a blessing is a test. Every achievement of the blessing is a test. And every loss of a blessing is a test. Life is nothing else but is a test. Oh, this is all what it is. Test. Every state is a test. Happiness is a test and sadness is a test. Health is a test and sickness is a test. Spouses are, spouses are a test and the children are a test. Having children is a test and having no children is a test. Everything is a test. I don't understand why do people get so engrossed in wanting for a particular blessing. 
any that's fine to have to 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 uh, ask Allah Taala for a blessing. Definitely, we must do that. But then, if it is not coming, why people do become so impatient? I don't understand that. If Allah Taala is not getting you married yet. It is a test, and once you get married, you will realize it's a bigger test. <laughs> Sometimes the husbands are a test and sometimes the wives are a test and sometimes both are tests. People are so, they're wanting, inviting, ya Allah, so worried, not getting married, oh my God. <laughs> Subhanallah. They say, उसको ना मिली वो भी बचता है और उसको मिली वो भी बचता है everybody thinks you know oh my god it was better no no some people alhamdulillah that they feel good about it i feel good about it alhamdulillah it's a good test <laughs> alhamdulillah some tests are good tests right easy tests but at the end of the day it's a test it is a test Children are a test. Some people are so, get so worried at not having children, not having children. They'll do anything to have children, you know, go to doctors, get medicines, blah, blah, blah. Go to, well, it was a, it, no, no children is a test and having children is also, it's a bigger test. It's so difficult to train your child on the path towards Allah Ta'ala. People who have children and they're concerned, ask them, how difficult is this? Very difficult. People have one, they're, they're worried about two. People have two, they're worried about three. People have three, they're worried to have four. People have four, they're worried, you know, I wish that I had less. Everybody is worried. Because everything is a test. Everything is a test. So please, you know, whatever state Allah Ta'ala keeps us in, be happy. I'm not saying don't ask for blessings, do ask for blessings. We are fuqara, we are beggars in front of Allah. Our job is to beg. We must beg, we must beg, we must beg. But if Allah Ta'ala, out of His infinite wisdom, He does not give us that blessing that we are asking for, don't get upset. Because everything is a test. Right? Our problem, do you know why do we get worried? The reason we get worried is that our heart is attached to these blessings. Our hearts are hooked up to these blessings. That's why when people, Allah Ta'ala gives them wealth, their hearts are in that wealth. In the awalukum wa awladukum fitna. They are test and our hearts get just, they're test that, what sort of test? That will our hearts be hooked up with that or not? This is the test. And our job is to make sure that our hearts are not hooked up to all of these blessings. This is the job. This is our struggle. Ah, we have like this, a paradise in our heads, right? A, a house in Palm Jumeirah, you know, in the middle of nowhere, a ten-bedroom house. It should be equipped with this, this, this. And, you know, I have to get married to the most beautiful girl on the face of the earth. And I have five children and, you know, I'll make them this. And, you know, I'll have a business that's a multi-billion dollar business. This, we are making our paradise in our head. And we are focused on building our paradise all the time. This is attachment of our heart in the blessings. Blessings is not bad. Blessings and good, in fact. We are fakirs. If Allah Ta'ala gives us charity, a blessing in charity, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much, Ya Allah. Give us more, Ya Allah. We always want more. We crave for more blessings. But... With the difference that our hearts are not attached. In other words, that if we lose that blessing, that we don't die with a heart attack. If we don't get a blessing, then we are not worried. We are not sad all the time. Oh my God, you know, I'm not having another child. This is our job. That our heart should not be into these blessings. Our heart should be focused on Allah. Right? This detachment of the heart from the blessings is called Zohar. Not having world, not having blessing is not called Zohar. Detachment of the heart from these blessings that are a test is called Zohar. There are many people 
who had Allah Ta'ala given them a lot. Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan, Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anu, he, Allah Ta'ala blessed him with so much wealth, so much wealth. Do we think that, oh, subhanAllah, mazallah, he was any lower sahabi than others who did not have wealth? No. He is the third. After saying Abu Bakr and Usman, Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anu, he is the third in, in the, amongst 124,000 plus sahaba. He is there on, on, on level three. SubhanAllah. First three, from amongst first three people. From Al Khulafa Al Rashidin. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati Khulafa Al Rashidin al Mahdiin. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that all of you, you, you must follow my sunnahs and you must follow the sunnah of Al Khulafa Al Rashidin. Amongst them was Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan. Such a wealthy man, such a big businessman. SubhanAllah. Amongst Ashra Mubashara, the ten people who were given glad tidings of paradise, through the blessed tongue of the Prophet ﷺ, one of them was Abdurrah, Sayyidina Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Such a wealthy man. Such a wealthy man. It's not about having wealth. Wealth is, not, having wealth is not, we cannot say that he does not have zuhud. Detachment of the dunya. It's, the zuhud does not mean that you have to go and live in a hut on the top of a mountain and you just graze sheep. It does not mean that. Zuhud means that your heart is detached from the blessings. This is what Zuhud is. You know, we need blessings. We need, this world is Darul Asbab. We need Asbab in order to live. Right? For example, the ship needs water in order to float, in order to go from one place to another place. If there's no water, it will get stuck. If we don't have Asbab, we'll get stuck. If we don't have wealth, we'll get stuck. How will we live? How can we pay our rent? How can we pay our bills? How can we buy food? How can we buy clothes? These are necessities of life. These are necessities. If you get sick, how can we go to the doctor? How can we give, you know, the doctor's fees? All of that. We need that. If you have to serve the deen of Allah, it needs a spab. You need to run a madrasa. It needs a spab. It needs wealth. Right? You, you need to get a building. If you're sitting on rent, you need to pay the rent. All of the projects, you know, for example, you need to pay the salaries of the teachers. For example, you need to buy books. All of them, all of these things, it need a sbaab. This is part, it is sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to have a sbaab. But, as far as that ship is on the water, it is perfectly fine. It will float. When will it go wrong? When the water comes inside the ship. Then it will drown. As far as water is underneath the ship, perfectly fine. It needs that. When the water comes inside the ship, then it will make it drown. This is exactly what it is. That as far as the sabab is used to for live for living, as far as it is in the you you take keep it as means and you keep it as sabab, it is perfectly fine. When you make it as a goal of your life, then your ship will drown. The ship of your life will drown. So keeping this water out of the life of the ship is called zuhud. This is what zuhud is. And subhanAllah, it's a very tough thing. <laughs> it's a very, very tough thing. And he, as if you throw something in the water and you're also saying to that thing, you know, don't get wet. <laughs> huh? You throw a child, for example, you're a trainer, you're, you, you teach people swimming, and you ask one of your students, you go jump in the water, make sure you don't get wet. And then he's thinking, you know, how is it possible? He's asking me to jump into the water and also asking me not to get wet. Very tough. It's very, very tough. But this is test. This is the test. Whatever I do, maybe I'm a, I'm a student of swimming, I now I'm thinking, what should I do? Or right, let me go and buy, buy a swimming suit that is waterproof. That will not make me wet. I'll just cover from head to toe. Right? All of, I'll wear goggles and wear whatever it's necessary. But the trainer is saying, don't get wet. And right? I'll do whatever. He said, he's, he's giving me an exam. He's giving me a test. All right? Jump into the water. Don't get wet. I'll do whatever to pass this test. If I need to secure 100%, I will do whatever. But this is the test of life. Allah Ta'ala is saying that, alright, you did tawbah, 
you you achieved the state of zikr, you did anabat Allah. Now your job is that make sure that all of these you know glitters that you see around, make sure that you don't get hooked up with that. These are asbab needed, but your heart should remain away from that. Your heart should not have any love of these things. This is the test. It is given to you, but if you want to come to me, if you want to travel on this journey towards me, if you want to come closer to me, this is a test that you must pass. Subhanallah, in many people who are doing ACCAs, uh, countings, and they have, how many tests do you have? How many do you have? Fourteen. He's saying, I'm done. <laughs> Did I ask him this question, I'm done? I said, how many exams do you have? Mashallah. How many did you do? Seven. 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 So he's happy. He's still stuck. <laughs> so in order to do all of them, you have to come, come, you have to pass all of them step by step, right? You have to pass step number, test number one, and then two, and then three, and then four. If you want to pass all of them, you have to pass all of these. So in order to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must have an abat in Allah. And then you have, you, then the next test is to have zuhud. If you don't pass this test of zuhud, you cannot go to Allah Ta'ala. You cannot have love of dunya, the love of asbab, the love of all of what you have, and also have love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala at the same time. It does not work like that. In order to have muhabbat for Allah, you have to get rid of the muhabbat of the dunya. Must. This is zuhud. And when people have zuhud, then everybody will go to paradise, despite of the fact that he is the poor person, he is living in the hut, or he was living in the palace. Huh? Both of them will go into paradise. He can be a king, he can be like Sulaiman alayhi salam, he can be like Dawood alayhi salam, subhanAllah, these kings, prophets and the kings, had were ruling the wind and the animals and the jinns and the humans, yeah, in the split of a second, you know, the jinns were, the, the people were bringing them the thrones and whatever they wanted. Ne'mal abd, Allah Ta'ala talks about them. Ne'mal abd, innahu abwaab, that what beautiful people were they. Inna wajadna hu shakira. When they had blessings, they, Allah, I found them very grateful people. Ne'mal abd, what beautiful people were they. Innahu abwaab. And then people who did not have anything, they lost everything. Say they have Kubala Islam, Inna Wajadanahu Sabira. I found him very patient. Nirmal Abd Innahu Allah. SubhanAllah. It does not matter. You have it or you don't have it. You're a king or you're a beggar. Right? You all it if you have Zuhud, then it takes you towards that journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes there will be, be there will be poor people, they will not have anything, but they will go into the fire. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said about few people in the Qur'an when they saw Qarun, that his people were, were carrying the keys of his treasures. And they said, Ya laytanana mithla ma utiya Qarun. Oh, I wish that we had also what Qarun was given. Right? They had this thinking, wishful thinking that, oh, if we were Qarun, we would also have been arrogant. We would also have lived our life our way. We would also have gone to nightclubs and we would also have you know, being with all of that sins, a wish, right? There's some people who wish. Then despite of the fact that they will have nothing, they will go into the fire and the, some people who have everything, but because their hearts are not attached, they will go into paradise. This is so. This is so. Then inshallah will start and this talk, keep, we'll continue with this topic inshallah after Maghrib. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand all of this. And may Allah Ta'ala allow us to travel towards Him to have this journey towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil